Hi, this is Jared, otherwise known as Circuitry with Lullabot, and I'm going to show you how to do uh, patches today. Patches are a <clears throat> really typical thing we do with uh, Drupal.org in order to improve code or just get changes into modules that you know you may not have any sort of access to actually commit to. It's also a great way to just collaborate with the maintainers of a particular module when you find a bug or have an improvement that you'd like to make. And a maintainer is much more likely to get that improvement in if you actually do the work of getting the code there for him or her to review. So let's go get started. Um, the one thing, the first thing, you can read about almost all of this stuff on drupal.org slash patch. Uh, made a nice little URL there for you to just go down through uh, documentation and read all about patching. Uh, but hopefully this video will kind of accelerate that a little bit for you. Uh, so the first thing we want to do uh, in our process is we want to clone a module. I'm going to use a module that uh, I maintain currently called the flag abuse module and uh, let's get started. So uh, the first thing you want to do in your terminal is to clone the module. The command for actually doing that, uh, uh, you first have to have git installed and working. This tutorial does not cover that but you can get the commands if you actually go to the module, any any module actually you can go to has this little version control tab and if you go there it gives you the actual command to use. So you can actually choose which branch of the module you'd like to check out. Uh, usually if you are going to be patching something you want to get the the dot x release of the most latest uh, because that's usually where any code's going to go into. Um, if you would try to do a patch against, you know, a, a full release or something like that, there could be code into the head of that branch already. So you want to you want to try to use the head of of whatever branch. Uh, so you can change this right here and say show, and it will change uh, this command here for you. So we're just going to copy this command here and within our terminal. I already have a Drupal site set up, uh, ready to go, Drupal 7.8. I'm in the sites all modules directory currently. I'm just going to paste this in here and that is going to go out and clone that module and create the directory for me. So see we have a flag abuse directory in there. We could go into that flag abuse module. Oops. You'll see here we have the 7.x.2.x version of that module. Now this is a little trick here um, where I have an article on this which I'll link to from this video about how to get this into your bash shell. It's, it's pretty nice because as you can see you can switch directories and uh, when you're in a different git repository it actually tells you what branch you're working with. So we have that module checked out and uh, from here we need to enable that module. So let's go ahead and enable flag abuse and you see that we already have it enabled but you know you want to enable that on yours. Now if we go back to our Drupal site, I have a fresh Drupal install here. And flag abuse, what it does is it creates uh, a couple of preset flags for you. So we can go to structure and then flags and uh, typically flag gives you the bookmarks flag and flag abuse provides abuse node, abuse comment, abuse user, which you can use. For this one, we're going to use the comment one. So I'm going to enable that here. Uh, you have some default settings all in place. Uh, we're going to make sure we check article for this. Everything else is pretty good. Submit. And we now have the comment abuse working. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is I'm going to go look at the views that this creates for us. 
Uh, you'll see that a view was created for us as well when we enabled that flag. So let's go ahead and edit that view and oh, it looks like we've got a bug. This view is looking for a flag by the name common abuse. Uh, there's no such flag. Well, that's because our flag is called abuse comment. If we go back here, it's abuse comment. Comment abuse. So that's why we're getting this error here. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to go and search for this error. Uh, so that's the first thing you always want to do. You come up with an error, go to the module page, and search through the issues you know, to see if anybody else has actually come up with this. Uh, let's see, we've got a couple different results here. I mean conflict with views, that sounds about right. Let's see what we got here. Name conflict with views. Yep, comment abuse, no such flag. That's the one we want. So somebody has already come in and reported this, at least for us. Uh, let's see if there's any, if anybody has a fix for it. And it looks like there's a fix. So we don't actually need to make a patch for this, but what we should do is we should try to test out this patch. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. I'll show you how to apply this. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to download this, and we're going to go to our sites, sites all modules, flag abuse, and I'm just going to save that patch right in there. And we need to try this out. Now the next uh, steps I'm going to show you are also in that page that I showed you the uh, the version control tab here. Uh, if we look down through here, there's a patching se section. So it not only shows you how to get your repository set up and shows you how to uh, check your repository status, which different branches, but it also shows you how to uh, a patch, use patches for this. So we have a creating patches section here and an applying patches. We downloaded a patch and we're going to actually apply it. So that's what we, this is the instructions that we want to follow here. Git apply v and then the patch name. So let's go ahead and try that. Let's look in our directory, make sure our patch is there. You can see our, our patch right here. And we're going to git apply v and our patch name. Checking patch, applied patch, applied cleanly it says. That means there's been no conflicts with this patch and it, the, since it applies cleanly we know that there's been no there's no conflicts and if you get conflicts that's that's a whole nother issue but basically what that means is the patch was probably created before some changes went into the module so what would happen is you'd want to look at the patch and you'd want to figure out what the patch is actually doing and then reapply it and re-roll that patch and upload it to your to the issue queue and say hey here's a re-roll because uh, X Y and Z has changed uh, since the last patch was, was rolled but this one worked here pretty good so let's just see um, Let's see if it actually fixed our problem. Let's go in here. I'm actually going to clear the cache first. And after clearing the cache, I'm going to reload the page. And our error is gone. So we know that this actually fixed our problem. Um, the fact that it fixed our problem means that we should really go back to the issue queue and we should tell these people that um, you know hey this patch worked for me it fixed my problem and then what we want to do is we want to mark this reviewed and tested by the community you are the community you've reviewed and tested this patch and now the module maintainer knows that there's a patch in his queue that's been reviewed and tested it's been vetted and uh, it's way more likely to get in